Hello and welcome to the Rainbow Reads LGBTQIA plus readers advisory for preschool and youth webinar. My name is Beth Yates and I am the youth services consultant in the Indiana State Library's professional development office and our presenters today are going to be Jane Walters, the West Indianapolis branch manager and Maggie Ward, the outreach services manager, both of the Indianapolis Public Library. Before we get started, since this webinar is pre-recorded, I wanted to say a quick note about library education units, aka LEUs, for Indiana library staff who may be watching this. The webinar is approximately one hour and will be worth one LEU, and ISL's policy states that if you watch a recording of a You'll need to have someone in administration or HR at your library create the LEU certificate for you as they are the ones who can verify that you watched the webinar. If you have any questions about that, you can visit the Indiana State Library's website or you can email us at statewide services at library.in.gov. I also wanted to mention that any book lists or other handouts mentioned in this webinar will be posted along with this recording on the Indiana State Library's archived webinars page. All right, let's get into this webinar. Jane and Maggie, you can take it away. Hi, my name is Jane Walters. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm the branch manager of the West Indianapolis Branch Library over on the west side. and. I'm a member of the LGBTQ plus services committee and one of the founding members actually. And these are my two kitties, Piwacket and Desilee. Hi, I'm Maggie Ward, manager of outreach services for the Indianapolis Public Library. I am also a somewhat on a limited basis member of the LGBT community services. Uh, I was a founding member as well. Um, and I've been with the library for six years, working at a few different branches before I made it to outreach. And this is my dog, Barry. Looking very, very cute, of course, <laughs> as always. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to jump into some Queer 101. What is LGBTQIA+, because a lot of people, they don't understand what all the letters stand for. There's quite a few of them. There's always some that are being added on. We're going to run through just a couple of the basics. Um, there's plenty of information out there if you're looking to find out more about each of these. And I highly recommend it if you haven't already. Uh, the L is for lesbian, the G is for gay, the B is bi for bisexual, T is for transgender, Q is for queer or questioning, and I is for intersex, and A is for asexual. You might also hear that one referred to as ace. want to jump in a little bit into um, gender because it's often talked about and sometimes it's not very well understood. So this is the gender unicorn. It's one of my favorite depictions of explaining gender to, to folks. Um, gender identity, that's what you're thinking, how you think about yourself as far as um, what you feel you are, whether you feel more female, male or somewhere in between or some other gender and then gender expression is how you express that what are you wearing what what do you show to the world you know do you do you show a more feminine side do you show a more masculine side do you show a more neutral side some people flow back and forth and that is fairly common as well and um you might hear that referred to as being gender fluid or gender diverse. And then the sex assigned at birth, that's the genitalia. That's where the doctor holds up the baby, looks at the genitals and says, oh, as far as I'm concerned, looking at these genitals, this is a male or this is a male. And then you have also intersex, which sometimes it's not necessarily clear. There might be a form of both. Uh, sometimes that might not present until puberty though, in which rather than having testicles, somebody might have ovaries and they don't know that until you get into puberty. And that can be a very complicated one because sometimes those decisions are made for those children at birth and then surgeries are done. So they never really have a chance 
to determine which one they are and to tell people which one they are actually are that choice is made for them. Um, and then the part where you're physically attracted to that one is when you are physically attracted to one gender or another or multiple genders and that can be completely different from who you're emotionally attracted to you might be emotionally attracted to women but you could be physically attracted to men or you might be physically attracted to women as well as emotionally attracted to women vice versa in any number and myriad of ways it's it's a very fluid the whole thing is very fluid <laughs> and it can be different for anybody and it can change over time as well you might find later on in life that it's like no you know what they just aren't for me i want to get into some statistics um, because that's one of the reasons why we first started putting these presentations together for being able to include um lgbtq IA plus material into stories and displays and things like that. And that's because the kiddos are going through a lot. Um, they're often underrepresented. They're often made fun of. 67% um, of LGBTQ youth hear their families make negative comments about LGBTQ people. 78% of youth not out to their parents as LGBTQ hear their families make negative comments about LGBTQ people. So they're hearing it at home. They're hearing these negative things at home and they're also hearing it at school. They're hearing it from the students, but not just the students. They're hearing it also from teachers and other school staff as this one slide shows from um, a survey done by Gleason in 2017. They hear it from the staff, they hear it from the teachers, they hear these negative comments there. And the variety of impact that it has can vary uh, based on the race as well. Latina LGBTQ girls have a significantly higher prevalence of suicide attempts than youth of any other race. Um, Black LGBTQIA kids are like right behind that. Teens who identified as transgender female reported a rate of 30%, while teens who identified as transgender male reported a rate of 51%. Um, when it comes to attempting suicide. So these are very, very real issues and they impact the kiddos a lot. And that's one of the reasons why we want to make sure that we're creating those spaces in the libraries for the kids because they're hearing all this negativity everywhere else, at school, at home, from their parents, from their friends, even if they aren't out to their friends. And we can be that safe space for them. And we can start early. We can start by how we introduce the world around them to them. We can offer up images of people like them and we can also show those family dynamics and things like that to the other kids as well so that it normalizes it because it is normal there's nothing weird about it and so the more the kids around them understand that oh you know what it's not that uncommon for somebody to have two moms it's not that uncommon for two dads to have a kid that kind of thing and that's where we start to get into just the rep general representation. So that's why our next part we find to be very important, with, especially with children's literature, is windows and mirrors. And if you're not familiar with the windows and mirrors concept, basically uh, children's books should represent a world that a child already sees, their world, a mirror of themselves, and a window into a world they don't know. And this is great for many reasons. It gives them something they're comfortable with and it gives them something new to think about. And why this is important with diversity, especially with LGBTQIA, is that you are showing those LGBT children, look, there is something like you out there. You're not alone. There is other representation of you, but then you're also showing them other aspects of that spectrum. And then you're showing other children 
this is something else out there. This is something else and it's nothing to be scared of. It's just who this person is. So we find that windows and mirrors is very important. Now, of course, the children's publishing is industry as a whole has been a little bit behind the times. So this first graphic here is from 2015 and it shows uh, the amount, the percentage of representation in children's publishing. As you can see in 2015, 73% of the characters were white. Kind of problematic. We had 12% were animals, trucks, and them, and objects, that kind of thing. Only 7.6% were African-American. 3.3% Asian Pacific, Asian Pacific Americans, 2.4 for the Latinx community, and not even a percentage for American Indians First Nations. So that was 2015. Now I'm going to show you 2018. As you can see, starting to go up, we're getting a little better. The white po uh, population representation has dropped down to 50%, but animals has gone up a little. We've got 10% for African Americans, 7% for Asian Pacific, 5% for Latinx, and 1% for American Indians. So we're getting there. It's climbing up year by year. So I also have our numbers for 2019, which has been more recently compiled this year, of June this year. And in case you are not familiar with We Need Diverse Books, which is where this slide is from, they're a great organization to follow to gain inspiration for diverse books, to just find information about the publishing industry and authors. I highly recommend checking them out. So this is 2019's numbers. As you can see, our inanimate objects and animals and stories is still, still prevalent in our literature. Uh, White's at 41.8, so it, we're still getting a little more of a balance though, because our numbers are going up other uh, BIPOC areas. It's not great. It needs to be higher, which I think we can all agree, but at least we're starting to see that trend and change in the industry overall. So that's just to give you an idea of how children's literature has been changing over the last five years. Um, but I think a big part of that is libraries can help purchase more diverse books, you know, get those diverse books circulating, and that will again eventually translate to the publishing industry as well. So this is just a quick slide to show you about representation in um, LGBTQIA YA novels in particular. Um, as you can see, it is heavy on the cisgender female and male characters. And from 2014 to 2018, those numbers don't change much. So that's just a little aspect of another part of the publishing industry with YA novels, um, which Jane knows lots and lots about. So if you want to talk more about YA with her, feel free to reach out to her. Uh, but that just gives you an idea like we still have a ways to go with our representation in the publishing industry. So without further ado, let's jump into some of our books we have. So our first slide here is our children's books. We started with picture books and what we wanted to do is show you a diverse option that can be paired with a more general book that you you would see your parents checking out for their kids all the time. So the first thing we picked is we've got the hips on the drag queen go swish, 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 which who cannot love that? It rhymes with the song of the wheels on the bus. So if you have parents looking for those rhyming stories and you want to just sneak something in that's a little different, this is a great story. And it is written by Little Hot Mess, a drag queen herself and it features a bunch of drag queen friends of hers, and it is just delightful. The illustrations are fantastic. It's a lot of fun. I highly recommend it. And then the next books are all Jane's. And so the next books, you start getting into, you're doing story times and it's like, oh, I wanna do story times about family and love and things like that. And one of the popular ones that's always pulled for story times forever and ever and ever is Love You Forever. It is a classic that gets used a lot for story times. And um, one of the things that you can do is you can kind of switch it up a little bit in showing those windows, showing those mirrors, and introducing things like Papa, Daddy, and Riley, which is a fantastic um, picture book. It's, it's definitely more for a story time because it's a little more involved. 
as opposed to plenty of hugs, which is more a limericky, you know, sort of picture book, maybe for the even younger ones. Papa, Daddy, and Riley, it's about uh, a young girl who goes to school and she's got her two dads and she gets asked, well, which one is your your dad? Well, they both are. Yeah, but which one is your dad, dad? And she started to think about, you know, she didn't want to pick. They're both her dads. But it helps to kind of show that for the other kids that might be in the story time, you know, that the words that you say to people about their family have an impact because Riley starts to really struggle with she doesn't want to pick one or the other. As far as she's concerned, they're both dads. It doesn't matter. And the love is equal to them. And so it shows that there is that aspect um, of a family dynamic, as well as it shows the impact of your words have impact as well. And then the Plenty of Hugs is just a wonderful, you know, lesbian couple with a with a baby and you got bike riding and just hugging and it's just all sorts of cuteness and fun and it's it is more limericky and a nice cute little story and then you get into more of the picture books that are for the story time related um if you've ever read mary had a little glam i if you have not, you absolutely need to run out and check it out immediately because it is fantastic. It's full of glam, expressing yourself and everything else like that. And it's an atypical cis cisgender child. But then on the flip side, you can also show that in a book like Bling Blame, it doesn't matter what your gender is. It, you can be blingy and blingy and glamorous and everything else like that, regardless of your gender. You can just embrace Embrace the glitter. I highly recommend embracing the glitter. We, this, we should all embrace the glitter. <laughs> we really should. Um, so our next line of books are uh, When Aiden Became a Brother, which is a wonderful story about a child who identifies as a boy, uh, even though, you know, doctors would say this child was born as a girl. So um, Aiden is growing up and finding their identity and they, um, the parents are pregnant with their second child and they're talking about, oh, you know, is it going to be a boy or a girl? And Aiden says, no, no, let, let the baby decide. Let the baby tell you who this per person is, who they're going to become. Um, it's a lovely story with really wonderful illustrations. Um, it's just a great read for a family um, and it can work in a story time too but it's really a lovely one. And if you were trying to pair this with books about, cause you get parents coming and saying, oh, I'm having a baby and I need books for my, my older sibling to understand, you know, they're getting a sibling for the older child. I mean, this would be a great pair with a classic like Ezra Jack Heat's Peter's Chair about, you know, an older child getting a little sibling. Um, so I think when Aiden became a brother is a great mix for that as well. And then our last line, we have the great story, Introducing Teddy, which is one of my favorites. Um, it's this great book about a bear. And again, we're going to the, the animal represented in stories, but this one's interesting since it's a, basically an LGBTQIA animal. But it's about a bear who realizes, you know, I, I don't really feel like a boy. I feel like a girl. Um, and so the story is about the bear finding their identity and then the their child accepting the bear's identity. And it's a great story about friendship and just being who you are and accepting your friends for who they are as well. So I think it's a really great story to read with children, you know, just to explain like everybody's different and it's okay. You have differences and we have differences. And it's a great way for them to realize like, you know, your friends can be who they need to be. Uh, and we paired that with Chicken in Space, which is one that Jane also loves very much and can explain. I, I do love that one so much because it does delve into that, you know, your friends can be wacky and weird and it's fine and you can be wacky and weird and it's fine and it's just a matter of supporting your friends regardless. And <clears throat> we were very aware of the fact that we sat there and talked about like the representation and that animals seem to be over overrepresented, but they do get used a lot. 
And so we wanted to make sure that we had a little bit in there because some people do feel a little weird sometimes when they're reading books representing races that they aren't, genders that they aren't. They shouldn't because it's the book that's representing that, not you. The, the author, the illustrator, those are the ones that are representing that. You are just being the platform for them to be able to see it. So I hope that everybody kind of embraces that. And that's why we picked so many of the ones that we did to kind of throw in that mix and the variety that needs to be there because they're out there. They're not all just little white kids and animals. But Chicken in Space is definitely an amazing one. Speaking of amazing, uh, we wanted to get into some nonfiction because nonfiction a lot of times is overlooked. It's a great way to introduce nonfiction is story times. And some of them are really wonderful for doing that. Some of them take a little bit longer to read, so it's a longer story time, but a lot of times it's well worth it. Or you're just looking for more books to help um, push out to parents that are looking for things that are representing civil rights and different things like that. And so if, you, if you're looking at um, something like For the Right to Learn, definitely pair it would be amazing. It's got all these different stories about people who have been um, inspirational through creating pride, um, changing movements throughout just the LGBTQ by history, honestly. And it's absolutely fantastic. And um, it's written by Desmond the is amazing, who is a little drag queen. And when I say little drag queen, I mean literally a little drag queen. It's a young drag queen who started one of the first drag queen um, shows in, I believe, New York. Another one is if, if you're looking at things like Let the Children March, you can talk about things like This Day in June. Um, she Persisted is a very, very popular one. And on the other end of that, you can do Rain of Pride, which talks a lot about the beginning of Pride and as well as what pride is, what it means to people, and things like that. So these are all just very much about embracing the changes that are going on and the fights that are going on and how no matter how old you are, you can make a difference and you can make those changes for the better, for the world, and just be really awesome people. So I always highly push for, for people to empower the youngins <laughs> so that, that we can create some of the changes that need to be changed for the better, as we can see by the world around us. It needs it. So continuing with our nonfiction, with a little mix of fiction in it as well, uh, there's a newer book, uh, The Story of Pete Buttigieg, Mayor Pete, uh, which of course, you know, Indiana Hoosier. So you gotta, you gotta check that one out. But it's a great picture book about his story, his life, how he came to work in politics. Um, and it, it's lovely. And the illustrations are great. It has great, you know, like full encompassing photos and whatnot. Uh, so that's a great story. If, you know, your kids are starting to ask like, oh, I hear about Mayor Pete and I see signs for Mayor Pete. Who is Mayor Pete? That's a great book to read to them and you compare it because I'm sure a lot of families are talking about Ruth Bader Ginsburg. You compare it with a picture book about her life as well. Um, I mean, I, I think if if I had young children right now, I would be reading both of those to them every day. Um, so those are great nonfiction reads. Uh, they're a little lengthy for story times, but definitely great for like one on one parents reading with their kids at home. Now, another great one is The Day in the Life of Marlon Bundo, which um, the backstory on that, uh, you might have to tell it better than me, Jane, but the backstory came from The Daily Show, or was it John Oliver? I can't remember now, but it's um, kind of about the children's book about um, Vice President Pence's rabbit. 
So it's a story about a rabbit named Marlon Bundo who decides he likes another boy rabbit and he wants to be married to that boy rabbit. But then people tell him that he's not allowed to be married to the boy rabbit. But then he says, well, why not? And so it's this great story about the rabbits and their friends basically rallying together to say, no, we should be able to love who we love. And it's just a lovely story with great pictures, very fun to read to kids. And you can pair that one with one of my all time favorites, Not Quite Narwhal, which is a story of a unicorn who lives under the sea with narwhals. But the unicorn's like, I don't feel like I'm quite a narwhal. This just doesn't seem to add up. So the unicorn swims up to the surface and meets other unicorns and realizes, oh my gosh, I'm a unicorn. But the unicorn realizes, but I'm, I love my narwhal family and I kind of do represent like a narwhal. So the unicorn realizes I can have the best of both worlds. I'm bringing the unicorns and the narwhals together. And it's a gorgeous book, lovely illustrations. Jesse Seema is a great author and illustrator. I love all of her books. They're all worth to checking out. They're just wonderful. So that's kind of our nonfiction and moderately non <laughs> sort of fiction, nonfiction books there. So now we're moving into our middle grade books, uh, which we know kids love the graphic novels. So we focused on some graphic novels, especially the popular ones that the kids want to read over and over and over and over again. We wanted to give you something that you can pair with that. Like, oh, you've read this one 10 times. How about you read this one? It's similar. Um, so for any kids who love Victoria Jameson, like All's Fair in Middle School, which is a fun story, you can pair it with Alice Gino's second book, Rick, uh, which if you haven't read Alice Gino's books, they're really fantastic and great diverse reads. Um, then, Jana, you've got some more to tell us about the bottom line there. I do, yes. Lumberjanes by Shannon Waters is super popular, and in fact, it's been picked up to become a series, um, and the woman that did She-Ra will be doing the animated Lumberjanes. So I'm super excited about that. And you're likely to get a lot of sudden interest in it again. And I highly recommend that if there are people that are loving that, they're going to absolutely fall in love with Snapdragon. Snapdragon is a fantastic book. It's wonderfully illustrated. It's, um, it has witches. It has witches in it, which you can't go wrong with witches and seeing the spirits of animals. It's got a lot of gender diversity. It's got discovery of uh, gender in um, Snap's best friend and as well as just the general acceptance of it. Um, like there's one scene in it in which Snap and her friend are dancing around and Snap's friend is wearing a skirt that's Snap's mom's. And her mom comes in and my skirt. And Snap was like, yes. <laughs> and then it's like, it looks good on you. And that's it. Because it's not that big a deal. It's clothing. Who cares? But I just thought it was just a, an amazing way of showing that there can be that acceptance without it being like a whole big deal. There's definitely a lot of non-acceptance in there. Uh, there's bullying. There's overcoming that. There's just huge friendship stuff. There's a lovely like backstory romance that's just, I'm, it's just such a wonderful book. I can't recommend it enough. And then so um, diving into our chapter books for our middle grade readers. If you've got kids who are really starting to get into those lengthy chapter books and are looking forward to read, um, we always have the kids who don't want to read Harry Potter. They're more into the realistic fiction. So if you've got kids who like realistic fiction and you've got, you know, great authors like Jacqueline Woodson, and she has many great chapter books for young readers, uh, you can pair Donna Gebhardt's Lillian Duncan with some of those realistic readers. Uh, Lillian Duncan's a great story about uh, a transgender child who becomes friends uh, with a boy who has um, speech impediments and I think 
and it's been a while since I've read it. I think there might be something else, but now I can't remember. But they, you know, they they have differences, but they become friends and, you know, kind of respect each other for their differences. And it's a great story about friendship. So that's a great realistic fiction uh, pairing that you can give to those parents who are like, ah, oh, my kids read everything. What more can I get them? Um, so that's a great one. And then Jane's got some on the yeah, bottom. and then if you go into things like if you get the kids that are into things like the Garden of Amon, which is a really fantastic book and it was really popular for a while, um, there's you can pair that they they might enjoy something like the other boy, which it involves a young boy who has moved to a different school. He just wants to play baseball. He has a friend that he's made there. He really enjoys baseball and all this other stuff and doing these things and just hanging out with with his other friends, you know, and just doing other like normal boy things. The problem then comes in for him, though, is that. He's a transgender boy, and so one of the reasons he moved to this new school was so that he could be himself, he could start over, he could do all these things. And he hasn't told his best friend any of this. And there's also some of that non-acceptance from the father, while there's acceptance from the mother. So there's a bit of that. Um, it's it's a fantastic read. It can be a little difficult at times because it hits on some bullying and and things like that. That it's very real. And so it can it can be a little bit of a it can certainly be a good book for starting some conversations as well and showing one of the things that I do like about it, what it's showing though is that you don't see a whole lot of representation of transgender boys. You see a lot of transgender girls. And so that's one of the reasons that I really enjoy this one and, and highly recommend it. But the writing is just fantastic. So Diary of a Whippy Kid, we all know it. We maybe don't all love it, but we've all had kids who want it. So if you've got a kid that's read the series 10 times and you really want to get them something else to read, I highly recommend the Better Nate Than Ever series. It's fun. It's goofy. It's imaginative. And it's got a lot of representation, which is great about it. Plus, the author of that book um, writes YA, which is also really great. So it's one of those things like if the kid latches onto that author, they can keep growing with that author as well. Um, so that is a fun read alike for Diary of a Wimpy Kid, because I know we're always looking for something else to recommend for those kids that have read the series over and over again. Um, also, same thing with Raina Tagelmeier's books, which I'm sure every kid's read every one of her books 20 times over and you need something else to recommend. This, it is a graphic novel, but you could pair it with some chapter books. And I think Drumroll Please is a great pairing. Uh, Drumroll Please is about a girl who's going through a lot of family stuff. Her parents are getting divorced. She's going off to rock camp for the summer. She's excited about camp, et cetera. So it has a lot of similarities with drama and Raina Tagelmeier's other books as far as love of the arts, you know, finding yourself, dealing with family things. Um, but the great thing about Drumroll Please is that the main character is kind of discovering more about herself at camp, about her own sexuality and who she's attracted to. So it's a great middle grade read for kids who are just going through all the hormones, all the puberty stuff. It's a good thing that they'll be able to relate to as well with that story, just like with Raina Tagelmeier's books. And it's a wonderful book as well. And then if you you've got a lot of the kids that are into sports <clears throat> it happens they're out there there's lots of them and that's a really good way sometimes to get a kid interested in books uh, because they're not interested in reading but they're interested in sports you can sometimes get them hooked on something like crossover by Kwame Alexander which is fantastic um, he has a couple other sports books as well um, and if they are into sports then you can pair something like that which while the crossover is in prose a high five for glenn burke is not but it's another sports book that you can try and get the kids involved in you know and it's got some great representation in there it's about baseball lots of kids like baseball and, and stuff like that but then it blends in the diversity 
it blends in all of those things fairly seamlessly and it's not like it's it's one of those books where it's like this is not what the whole entire book is about and so they still get to enjoy all of, like the aspects of baseball and and those friendships and stuff like that and then of course you get into something like roller girl which was hugely popular um then one of the ones that you can pair with that is the derby De daredevils sorry <laughs> the derby daredevils and um that's just an if they were into roller girl they're going to really really enjoy uh derby daredevils because it's about a girl that's trying to get this team together and it's just it's a lot of fun and you're dealing with friendships you're dealing with you know those feelings starting to come around and what do you do with these feelings and, and those sorts of things and it's just a fantastic um it's just a fantastic pairing to go along with something like roller girl so uh continuing with some graphic novels that are always popular new kid which was a big splash when it came out <clears throat> pardon me um and very popular also a great diverse book in itself but if you have kids that love Jerry Crafts books, love new kids, uh, I recommend the Backstagers. And it's not just because I'm a former theater nerd myself, but it's also just a really delightful, fun story about a group of men who bond over their love of working together backstage in theater, um, which I think a lot of kids going into middle school and high school will end up relating to. Uh, but it's got great diversity lots of LGBT, LGBTQIA representation. Um, the illustrations are very fun. It's very reminiscent of Lumberjanes. Um, so it's another one you could pair with that as well, but great stories and backstagers as well. And then if you've got kids that are into the, the fantasy and the science fiction or just any of those sorts of things where the, and they've read the Amulet series, Fantastic series. I have kids that have read it multiple times from start to finish over and over and over again. And if you have kids like that and they're looking for something else, you can give them the deep and dark blue, which is a really good also fantasy sort of adventure. There's drama, there's, you know, the overthrowing of an entire family and a kingdom and there's magic involved. But it's also this discovery of one young girl and as they go to hide and both these twins go and they hide as girls within the spinners and one of them hates it they hate it it's not for them because it's not not everybody feels comfortable being female and so the one twin who is male he can't stand it the other one who's a transgender girl seems to find herself in that hiding she gets to finally be herself in that regard and so there's a lot of this wonderful coming of age discovering yourself as mixed in with the all the drama and the intrigue of what's going on in the sword fighting and fighting and just it's a lot of fun in general. And so those are the books. And as far as for um, other resources, Maggie mentioned earlier, we need diverse books. Uh, that information is here and we'll be send we'll be sending out all of these resources as well with the uh, reading list. But there's a lot of really good ones that you can follow on Twitter. You can go to their website. There's We Need Diverse Books, there's LGBTQ Reads, uh, Lambda Legal, if th there's ever any issues that you're having with like, hey, I'm trying to share this stuff and I'm getting pushback. And, you know, if you if you need some legal <laughs> help in that, that's what they're there for. There's also the Lambda Library or Lambda Literary. Um, and that one also has a Twitter hand, Twitter that you can follow. There's Glad, which is uh, some of these are really good for if you're looking for resources to pass on to um, 
the grown-ups for their little one. Uh, some of the parents or grandparents, aunt, uncle, whoever it is that's taking care of the little kiddo, they might not know where to go, not know what to do. And these are some really good resources for them as well. Uh, Gleason is great for following up on any in information as far as if you're trying to create those safe spaces within your school, or you can even use some of this information in, in creating those safe spaces for your public library or little small library as well. Uh, there's also the Gay Straight Alliance Network and the trans student educational resources. All of these are really, really good resources if you're looking for more information on how to help, how to be an ally, and just looking for things to be able to pass on to other people that are that are needing needing that help as well. Locally, we have the Indiana Youth Group. Right now, they're going through a lot of issues because of COVID. Um, they're doing mostly virtual right now. Um, same with any pride and uh, but they're really great organizations if the kids are looking for some place that they can go and they can hang out and they can be themselves that's a good one where you can direct them to um, even if they're just doing it online it's it's a it's a really good place for them to be able to find other people that they can relate to they can bond with and they can create those friendships that they need during those times. And there's also the IUPUI LGBTQ Plus Center. They have a lot of really good resources and they're constantly doing um, shows and things like that. I'm not sure how things are going with them right now during all the closings and stuff, but they are a really good resource as well. They do a lot of things online too. There's, they have some virtual online programming right now as well. That is, yeah, a lot of a lot of the ones that we're mentioning are um, ones that they are they've gone almost completely virtual in the meantime. And I'm walking all over Maggie's slide. Go for it, Maggie. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing great. It's fine. Uh, well, you mentioned the IEPY LGBTQ Center, and yeah, they have been putting out a lot of content online, so I would definitely check them out, uh, follow them just for, you know, added resources, added information. Um, PFLAG, of course, a great local organization uh, for parents looking for resources as well. Um, give them a shout out, give them a follow, and check out their resources and then an organization that we're really excited to see get their footing is Trinity Haven which is going to be transitional housing for LGBTQIA um, youth teens in particular um, and they are slated to be opening soon COVID gave pushbacks of course with you know supply and demand etc of getting things ready in their house but they're getting there and everyone's really excited it's one of the only places like it in the country so it'll be really great to have them open as well um, follow them online for more updates on what they're doing uh, and I'm going to throw this in for also if you're if you're wondering like how can I find out about more diverse books where do I you know find articles about diverse books we mentioned you know some great organizations earlier on the slides but another great place to uh, follow is Book Riot they put out a lot of great articles uh, about diverse books about LGBTQIA um, you know BIPOC authors, et cetera. So I, I would recommend following them on social media because they will always have different articles coming out. Um, and that's a great way to kind of stay involved and, you know, stay ahead of what's going on. So you've got a little insight of what's getting published and what's happening in the publishing world. So that is our, our presentation, but if you want more information about Indianapolis Public Library's resources, that is our website for our LGBTQIA resources. We do have a services committee and we're still meeting and working and coming up with content and whatnot. We also house the Chris Gonzalez collection, which was part of Indie Pride's offices and they donated it to us to make public. It is the third largest public circulating collection of LGBTQIA uh, items in the nation, third to New York and San Francisco, go Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a great collection. You can check it out on our website. The mm -hmm. items are requestable. You can, you know, read them, request them. 
see them around at the different branches. Um, and, you know, check out what our programming is. We have some online programming right now. We have a book club. Jane, what else do we have online right now? Uh, right now, we're mostly focusing on the book club, but we are looking at potentially doing some workshops and things like that as well. So just keep an eye out. Um, follow us on Goodreads because we have a Goodreads account, uh, which we really should have added to this slide. But look for us if you can find us through the blog for sure with no problem. <clears throat> and if you have any questions whatsoever after watching this, if you want more information on something, if you just want a little more clarification on something, we are always happy to help. You can find me at jwalters at nepl.org. You can find Maggie at mward at nepl.org. They make it super simple at our place. And you can also follow me on Twitter because I occasionally ramble and rant about books as well. So thank you for joining us. We're so glad we could present for you. Sorry we couldn't do this, you know, with an audience, but we hope you enjoy it. And I just want to say thank you very much to Jane and Maggie for their time and putting together this awesome presentation. I learned a lot about all those resources that you shared. We will definitely make sure we share both of those, um, both the book list and the resources on the same page where this webinar is posted um, on the State Library's website. We will make sure that those are posted so people can access. Uh, thank you for everything. And for uh, <laughs> yeah, no problem. And uh, I hope everyone has enjoyed this presentation. Thank you. Bye.